Uh oh, the dreaded check engine light just popped on. Stick around because I'm breaking down why proper diagnostics are crucial for saving you time, money, and bigger headaches down the road. You may have grabbed your own trouble code. Maybe it's a PO420, a PO171, or anything else. When you take it to the shop, they tell you they still need to do a diagnostic procedure. I want to explain why, what they're actually doing, and more importantly, is it worth it? Guys, welcome back to the Ortotech Garage. My name is Keith. Thanks for joining me on this one. I've got in the garage today this 2013 Ford Mustang with the Coyote 5.0 engine in it. And it's got a check engine light on it. We're gonna walk through some of the steps for diagnosing this, but I just wanna get into a couple of things you need to know before we do that. It's important you understand that uh, check engine light will come on, it'll illuminate, and it'll store a diagnostic trouble code. A diagnostic trouble code will be related to a particular system in the car and not so much a particular part in the car. So I want to differentiate that. And then also I wanted to mention that the check engine light and the powertrain control module are not the only lights and systems that have diagnostic codes associated with them. So you may have an anti-lock brake light on. It'll also store diagnostic trouble codes. You may have an um, SRS system, supplemental restraint system, will have diagnostic trouble codes associated with them. They're in separate modules or computers and they need to be accessed separately. So it's not just the check engine light that has diagnostic codes. And it's important that you understand too, these diagnostic codes are just leading you to a specific subsystem within a larger system so that you can narrow down where the testing needs to happen. I also wanted to note in onboard diagnostic systems, OBD2, there is a specific set of generic codes, or I should call them universal codes maybe, that apply to every vehicle. And these codes usually start with a P0 something. So any P0 code is gonna be what we call a generic code. And you'll see that it should be standardized and universal among all manufacturers, especially here in the US. I'm not sure about other countries, but here um, we have this standardized system. Now, in addition to that, it's possible that you have some P1 something 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 codes. And these P1 codes are gonna be manufacturer specific. They may be only on a Ford. That P1, whatever it is, is only for Fords. And that P1 with the same number on a, a Toyota could be something completely different. So it's important you know the difference between a P0 code and a P1 code. These P codes are usually powertrain codes related to this check engine light. If you have a B code somewhere, it's usually body control. They have all these different designations to help try to standardize some of these things. It's also important that you know too, these generic codes are grouped into some kinds of categories where you know, they'll be grouped into ignition system codes, fuel system codes, emission system codes, transmission control codes, and you know, the 700 series are transmission codes. Um, you know, the 300 series codes are ignition related. So as long as you know that there are some basic rules and guidelines around these P0 something 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 generic codes or universal codes, uh, that'll get you going in the right direction. I wanna talk about this car specifically. This vehicle's in for a check engine light on, it's got a code P0442 evaporative emission system leak, and it's a small leak. So this systems can identify small leaks, large leaks. There's many codes here for evaporative emission system leaks, basically fuel vapor type leaks. And uh, I wanna kinda walk through a little bit of the process of diagnosing this car. Any good diagnosis should start with confirming the customer's complaint. So this vehicle's got a check engine light on. We wanna make sure the light's still illuminated and it didn't go out for some reason. Uh, just give us some clues to as whether the car's problem is intermittent. You know, maybe it's, they've been driving it for a couple of weeks, the light went back out because it hasn't noticed the fault again in a while. So just a good idea to, to verify those things. Maybe road test the vehicle, see if there's any drivability problems, any running problems that are associated with this particular problem to help you diagnose the problem. And that's what we'll usually do to start. We've got the vehicle running and I can see the check engine light here is on steady in addition to a tire pressure monitoring system light on. It's also a good idea to see if there's any other lights that might be indicating a direction you need to lead in with your diagnostic procedure. So we went ahead and turned the vehicle back off, plugged our scan tool in. This has got a wireless communication box on it. This way we can operate our scan tool remotely. We don't have to sit here in the driver's seat with a, a leash attached to the OBD2 port. You can see here, we've got the scan tool connected and the trouble codes retrieved. There's several in here, but today we're only gonna be addressing this P0442 evaporative emission system leak, small leak detected. As is the case with many diagnostic trouble codes, and you see in the description here I just showed you, 
that we've got a fault code, but it doesn't tell us exactly what's wrong with the car, right? Yeah, okay, we have a leak, but where is the leak? Which component is leaking? Where is the problem? Is it a hose? Is there a crack in a solenoid, a control valve somewhere? It could be anything, right? So this is where the diagnostic procedure is important. We're gonna take this code and we're gonna look up Ford's specific manufacturer uh, outlined procedure for diagnosing this particular problem. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. All right, so we're here in the office now. We pulled up the information for this vehicle and we're gonna look into the diagnostic trouble codes in here. And I wanna pull up all these P code charts. And what I wanted to show you here and explain to you is that this entire list that you're seeing on my computer screen is a list of diagnostic trouble codes. These are all the fault codes that are available for this particular vehicle. You'll see some of them start with a P0, like this P0023. And then if I scroll down further, there's some with letters in them, P065B and X. There's also numbers with the P111 and letters. So there's tons of different fault codes in there. Some are manufacturer specific. Some are generic or universal to this OBD2 compliancy. And we're just gonna go ahead and try to find this P0442. I'll click on that. And then I wanted to show you here what this says. So hopefully you can see this on my screen, but it's, it's giving us the code number and the definition of the code. This says evaporative emission system leak detected. It's a small leak. There's also codes for large leak. And then it tells you here a little description about it. What the PCM is monitoring the EVAP system and it's looking for a small fuel vapor leak. And it'll set a code if it sees a vapor leak as small as 1.016 millimeters or 40 thousandths of an inch. That's a pretty small leak. And then here is the most important part is that it shows you the possible causes on there. So we've got everything from EVAP hardware that's not conforming to required specifications, uh, cuts and, and fuel hose leaks, tubes, uh, the evap evaporative emission system canister vent valve is stuck open, damaged or missing, or loosely installed fuel filler cap. We've got capless fuel tank system problem, uh, vapor hoses that could be loose, and all kinds of things. You can read through the list there, but uh, I'll give you a couple of diagnostic aids in there. And then also the most important part here is we got to go to pinpoint test HX. And this is really where the beginning of the diagnosis is. So. You already knew you had a trouble code, let's say. Um, it obviously didn't narrow down anything in particular in the system when you got that code. It just said you had a leak, but where is it and how do we find it? And that's what we're here for today. We're gonna go to this pinpoint test HX and read what it says. So we've got an introduction here. It's gonna give us a ton of information that we wanna read on here. And basically what it's telling us in here is that uh, probably the most important part here is they want us to use this rotunda smoke machine or something equivalent to that. They don't want us to use a soap solution um, and they don't want us to use a, a gas analyzer to look for hydrocarbons, which are essentially unburned fuels or fuel vapors, right? So it doesn't want us to do that. Ford wants you to use a smoke generating machine of some sort, which we'll have to do on here. And then it's gonna give you some more information on connectors, uh, what they look like, the locations, the, the terminals, what they are for your specific vehicle. And we're probably just gonna to wanna to move into the next test here. We're, we're not really ready to, to get into that just yet. So step one is asking us to carry out the evaporative emission system test. In here, it's gonna ask you to perform the test and see if the test passes or fails, okay? If the test passes, it's gonna, set you in a certain direction. If it doesn't, it wants you to move on to this next step, which is HX2 right here. Check for diagnostic trouble codes. Are there codes present? And for, for the purpose of this test, I want to speed through here. We're going to assume that this P0442 is still set. And it's telling us right here, if we have that code P0442, we need to go to test HX39. We go directly there, okay? This is, that's the code we're trying to address on this vehicle. So there's tons, tons of tests in here they have. You can see if I scroll through, it'll go all the way down through these numbers from you know, H1 on, HX1 on down. But we're truly just trying to get to this particular test for the code P0442, which is HX39. So we'll go ahead and scroll down to that. All right, so here we are. Test HX39. Check the fuel filler cap or capless fuel tank filler pipe. It's gonna give us some information on here what we need to do. We want to check for a missing or loose cap. This is a capless system on here. It doesn't have that. So it says vehicle with capless fuel filler tank. You want to inspect that uh, without disturbing it initially, right? So they don't want you to fix anything unintentionally. And they're asking you, is the concern present after you've checked it for damage? 
If you can't visually confirm there's a problem, then I want you to select this no selection. So for this code 442, we want to go to test HX45. So you can already start to see there's a little bit involved in uh, trying to pinpoint exactly where in this emission system the fault is. And so we know we have a leak in it. We don't know where. When we're working through this diagnostic flow chart, it's bouncing us around for different tests and different component inspections on here until we eventually come up with a problem. Now we may have found a problem there. Maybe let's say the let's say the fuel cap was missing completely. Okay, well we can identify that. We can say, okay, yes, we found the concern. Now it's just time to remedy the concern, put a new cap on it, uh, reset the trouble codes, let it perform the evaporative emission system test again, and it should pass the test. If it does, we've confirmed the repair and the vehicle is ready to go down the road. Now, if that wasn't the case, which it isn't on this car, we have to just kind of continue on this. So you'll see this uh, test number HX46 is to carry out the smoke machine phase two leak detection. And they've got some notes in here. They want you to basically check the system. They want you to look for any loose connections anywhere, wiggle some hoses and things. You can read this all along the top here. And uh, they're letting you know that the, some smoke pressure may not reach a leak in the fuel tank filler pipe between the check valve and the filler cap. And if leaking smoke is not found, you have to carry out a visual inspection of the fuel tank filler pipe, the fuel filler cap or capless fuel tank inlet. So they're telling you basically is if, if, you've, if you've got the system filled up with smoke and you still can't identify a leak, they still want you to perform more visual inspections on here. But there's a long list of things you need to test on here. They're going to want you to uh, open the evaporative emissions purge valve, and that allows the smoke to flow from the test port into the rest of the system. And they also want you to close the vent valve. And this is another valve at the back of the car uh, that lets fresh air into the charcoal canister. If we don't close that, all the smoke will come out there. So a couple of things you need to do in the procedure, and we're going to go ahead and, and run out to the car and, and perform some of these tests on here. But I just really wanted to give you a little overview of what's involved in going through the flow chart. And we're going to continue through this as we diagnose this vehicle and you know, selecting yes or no as we go through each step to determine where we need to go next. And that's really just the gist of the the flow chart, what, how it's leading us through the process, what types of things it wants us to look for. And that's really what you're paying for. You know, when you get, to, when you're having a diagnostic procedure done and the shop's charging you for that, they're charging you for their time. They're charging you for the equipment that they need to use. A smoke generating machine is not cheap. You know, they, they can go anywhere from, you know, a few hundred bucks to a couple thousand dollars, depending on the, on the brand and the, and the quality of it. The information systems that we use here in the garage, these are subscription-based systems. They cost a lot of money for us to have access to this information. It's not free. So I just wanted to kind of pinpoint uh, those things for you as well. You know, there's a cost involved in doing all this stuff. So, you know, if AutoZone's giving you a trouble code, and obviously there's no clear path to fixing this thing with just the trouble code, um, you're going to have to get involved in some kind of diagnostic procedure, some kind of work like we're doing here. Let's get out to the car and I want to show you what the smoke machine looks like. I've got my smoke machine out. It needs to be connected to air pressure, so I've got the shop air hose connected to the back of it. I've got it connected to the battery here, positive and negative, to power up the machine. I have a double check to make sure it has the solution in it, a special smoke oil basically you fill it with. And then we're just going to go ahead and, and turn it on and it's going to start to generate some smoke and with the air pressure connected to it, it should force a little bit out. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you can see what it looks like when it's generating smoke. And this is kind of what we're going to be looking for. We look for a leak. It's obviously because we have a small leak on this vehicle, from what the code is telling us, it's not going to pump out like this through a small leak. That would be pretty excessive, so that might be a large leak. So I just wanted to show you what that, that smoke generation looks like. We can control the flow on it. And this machine also has a gauge on it, so it's going to let us know uh, a quantity basically how much are we leaking and if, and if I block this off you can see the ball drops all the way down to the bottom uh, there's there's a measurement on there but less than ten thousandths of an inch and that's pretty much where we want to be less than ten thousandths of an inch if we have no leak and then if we have a large leak the ball will go all the way to the top so that's kind of helping us indicate how large the leak is on this thing if I block it off slightly you can see I can kind of make it move somewhere in between you know, to give you an idea of how much leak I need to be in this range. I want to connect this machine to the evaporative emission system. Uh, there's a hose that connects here between the throttle body and the evaporative emission system 
purge valve. And the purge valve is, is what we need to activate here through the scan tool. But there's normally a service valve on here, something with a green cap on it, where we can screw our smoke, smoke machine has a different adapter on it. We can normally screw that on to that cap uh, to connect the smoke machine. This car has got some modified intake system on it, it's a performance intake system. Somebody's cut that uh, service port out of the system. So the only thing we can do now is we'll just have to take the hose off completely here instead of removing a cap. I'll go ahead and connect the smoke machine. We're just going to connect it to this hose here. And we'll put this little tapered fitting in here tightly. And then we can turn our smoke machine on. And then what I want to do is I'm going to activate the purge control. And then we're going to turn this purge valve duty cycle up to 100%. What that's going to allow us to do is pass all that smoke through the purge valve, which was normally going to be closed. It's going to open it up completely and allow all that smoke to flow through the entire system all the way back to the car. And the next thing we would need to do is shut the vent valve on here. This particular scanner is not allowing me to activate both on this Ford at the same time. So I'll show you a little trick here. We go to the back and we'll just pinch off the canister vent valve hose and that should give us enough to, uh, to completely test the system. So as you can see, all the smoke is coming out of the charcoal canister vent. And what we want to do is we want to pinch this off. So I'm just going to pinch off the vent valve hose and that'll stop everything from coming out the vent valve without actually having to activate it. We're going to pinch that off snug and then we're going to let some of the smoke dissipate a little bit. And then all we need to do is examine this system for leaks. We're going to look at everything on here. So going from the front of the car over here, we want to follow the evaporative emission system purge line from the front of the car where the purge valve is. It runs up along here, along the, the body and down into the, into the frame tube. There's some covers and things on here. If we're looking for a leak, we want to inspect all of this. So we're going to kind of look all along all these tubes and things until we get to the back of the car. We want to follow everything back. So you can see we're at the back of the car here by the driver's side rear wheel and we've got smoke pouring out from underneath the fender liner. I'm just going to pull a little bit of this fender liner back. See if I can get you guys a good view of where the smoke is coming from. Let's see if we can get in there. You can see around the fuel neck there it's leaking. So you can see how easy this smoke generating machine makes our life when we're trying to diagnose a vapor leak. I wanted to mention too that this machine is great for finding vacuum leaks as well. Anywhere where we're looking for an air leak of some sort, you might want to use it in the exhaust system possibly. So it's got a lot of applications here in the automotive world. It's definitely handy to have and I understand this is something you may not have at home. I hope you've learned a little something about the check engine light, diagnostic trouble codes, how they apply, what they mean. Um, you know, there's literally a different code number and descriptions for just about every problem this, this vehicle can have, uh, you know, as far as uh, electrical or computer controlled items. It's really important that you understand there's a procedure that goes along with it in order to figure out exactly where the problem is. Not only a procedure, but information system you need and obviously equipment that you need with it. So keep that in mind next time your check engine light comes on. Um, you know, sometimes we have people too. Uh, we fix a repair for a check engine light, maybe something like this. And then, you know, three weeks later, the check engine light comes on again. And it's, it's hard for the client. And we understand that say, oh, you know, my light came back on again. It doesn't necessarily mean that the repair wasn't done properly. It could possibly be a separate problem. You can see from the list that I showed you earlier on my computer, there's literally dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of different fault codes. And there's only one check engine light. So that light will illuminate for any of those problems. And as you see in this particular car, we had three separate diagnostic trouble codes in there, but only one check engine light, right? So this is kind of important that you know these things. We're going to make the repair on this vehicle, put a new fuel filler neck in it, and then recheck it and make sure it's not leaking anymore. And also describe a little bit more in depth some of the evaporative emission system. Just keep in mind when this, this video is going to come out, you'll probably have a week or so lag before we can get you the next one. And so if you're looking for that one right away, it might not be up. We'll put a link in the description uh, just to remind you of that as well. Don't forget to check out some more content here. We've got another video coming up and like and subscribe as always if you're enjoying our content. We appreciate your support. We'll see you in the next one.